Hi, ArcfieldWeather.com meteorologist Paul Dorian here on Tuesday morning, December the 23rd. A lot to talk about this morning. Yesterday I posted at ArcfieldWeather.com the fact that it looks like a very winter-like pattern for the northeastern states uh, right through uh, the weekend into the early part of next week, really right through the end of next week. It looks like a winter-like pattern for the uh, mid-Atlantic region, the northeast U.S., Several days ago, there was an outlook or two from computer forecast models, for example, that uh, there was going to be a big warm-up in the northeastern part of the nation. That is not going to happen. It certainly will happen across the heartland. We talked about this last week and in yesterday's video discussion that places from Texas all the way to the Dakotas will have a sustained warm period this week. A very, very warm Christmas week across the heartland, but that sustained warmth will just not be able to make its way into the Mid-Atlantic region or northeast U.S. We have multiple Arctic air outbreaks uh, headed into the northeastern part of the nation really through the end of next week and, <coughs> excuse me, multiple storm systems to deal with. In fact, there's a significant winter storm threat for the Mid-Atlantic region on a Friday of this week, and we'll get into that over the next few minutes. Before we get to some of the maps, I have a map here of Canada uh, for a reason. Yesterday, right in this area right here, there's a little town called Brayburn in uh, the Yukon part of Canada. It's actually in the uh, Northern Territory, Northwest Territory province of uh, Canada, again, in the northwestern part of Canada. They bottomed out yesterday at 67.7 degrees below zero. That's a Fahrenheit reading, 67.7 degrees below zero. And that is the lowest temperature in Canada reportedly since January of 1999. So uh, quite an amazing event yesterday morning. Again, 67 degrees below zero, the lowest temperature reported throughout the country of Canada since January of 1999. Now, why is this important? Well, this is a very critical cold air source region for the central and eastern U.S. We have had this polar jet uh, for the last month or two just bringing Arctic air mass after Arctic air mass into the northeastern part of the nation. And indeed, that will continue to be the case. It very well may be a piece of this Arctic air mass that produced this uh, record low temperature coming into the northeastern part of the nation the early part of next week. Of course, it will be in modified form, but nonetheless, I expect to see very cold conditions in this part of uh, North America during the early part of next week and probably a, another Arctic air outbreak uh, uh, from this area all the way into this area by the end of next week. So again, this is an important uh, source region of cold air for the northern plains, the Great Lakes, and the northeastern part of the nation, and 67 degrees below zero on Monday morning. Well, I wanted to show the European model run from last night, but I'm going back in time to yesterday morning. Uh, that This is a Monday morning, December 22nd, just to kind of look again at this area here. This is northwestern part of Canada. You, uh, the uh, Brayburn town is right in this area right here, just to the east of the Alaska border, uh, bottomed out at 67 degrees below uh, on the Fahrenheit scale on a Monday morning. And take a look at uh, some of the intrusions of Arctic air into the northeastern states over the next week to 10 days or so. We'll see. This is a very, very, excuse me, very critical area with this polar jet regime that we're experiencing here. This is the, the polar jet kind of typical of a La Nina winter, which we are still in uh, as we uh, approach the end of December. But let's move forward here. Again, this is beginning yesterday morning and just look at uh, uh, some of these uh, uh, temperature anomalies at 850 millibars. We're uh, talking about 20, 25 degrees below normal. And we'll, we'll just go ahead in time into this morning, Tuesday morning, and just kind of keep an eye on that area right there. By the way, very, very sustained warmth uh, can see, be seen here on these maps across the central, the heartland of the U.S. And watch as uh, some of this air mass actually dives to the south and east uh, towards the latter part of the this week and then we'll see it 
again right in this area right here by the end of the work week and it then makes a push south and east again right from the northwestern part of Canada Alaska region into the uh, north central plains here so any warm up during the next few days in this part of the nation will quickly come to an end over the upcoming week and again a very warm Christmas week but that ends in the northern plains by the time we get to the upcoming weekend and here is that intrusion of Arctic <coughs> air excuse me all the way into the Great Lakes region by the early part of next week and then into the northeastern states by let's say Monday and Tuesday of next week and again some of this may be that actual modified air mass that helped to produce a 67 below zero reading on a Monday morning. And then we'll go out farther in time. And again, this just reloads here in the northwestern part of Canada. And another Arctic air blast. This one looks like it could be a real doozy across the northern plains of Great Lakes. By the time we get to the first day of the new year, this is next Thursday. January 1st. So it's kind of a longer range outlook here, but the, the, the main point I want to make here is we have multiple cold air outbreaks that really originate right in this area right here, cut, cut across uh, using that polar jet as a, as a means to ride south and east into the northern plains, into the Great Lakes, and into the northeastern part of the nation, and this uh, extends all the way through the end of next week. Well, now let's take a look at the European model run from last night with respect to the 500 millibar height anomalies. And I, again, I want to focus in on this area right here. There's been warmer than normal conditions across places like Sweden, in the northern part of Europe, the Scandinavian region. There has been an upper level ridge parked over that area for the last several weeks. It is now making a move to the west, retrograding. That does a couple of things. First of all, it will end up moving uh, into the, <coughs> excuse me, the North America side of the North Pole, Greenland, Iceland. We'll start to see heights rising, pressures rising over the next five or ten days or so, and that will uh, uh, in turn increase the chance for these cold air outbreaks to make their way from northwestern Canada all the way into the northern and northeastern part of the nation. When you have this high latitude blocking setting up here over Greenland, that uh, again is a favorable position for allowing the transport of cold air masses from northern Canada into the U.S. The second thing this retrogression of the ridge over Scandinavia will do is allow Europe to get much colder. Look for some extreme cold even in places like Sweden and the Scandinavian part of northern Europe uh, l uh, later next week into the beginning part of January. So big changes coming for Europe with respect to their warm pattern is about to end and it's about to end in a big way with a, a change to some extreme cold with that ridge starting to build over uh, Greenland and Iceland. We'll see that uh, as we go through the week here, here we are on Wednesday and now into Thursday. Still uh, nothing really showing up here over Greenland. I've got a trough here over northern part of Canada. But then we start seeing the oranges, start to see the oranges starting to build here, uh, uh, kind of uh, westward into Greenland, Iceland area right here. Here we are now at the end of this work week on Friday. And just watch the pattern here by the time we get to the early part of next week. Again, a building ridge of high pressure aloft here. We're at the middle part of the atmosphere, the 500 millibar part of the atmosphere. Here is a trough associated with that Arctic air outbreak that we talked about that would reach the northeastern states in the Monday, Tuesday time frame. And once we get to the early part of next week, here is a Sunday, and then here we go into Monday of next week. This is now December 29th. Just look at the change in the overall pattern. We have a upper level ridge here parked over Greenland, northeastern Canada. Think of this as just a strong blocking high and a deep upper level trough now sliding south and east towards the northeastern part of the nation. This is a wintry look for the Mid-Atlantic region, the northeast U.S. for sure. Then we'll go out a little farther in time just to point out that second or uh, Arctic air outbreak we talked about right here showing up in terms of a um, 
500 millibar height anomaly pattern by the middle part of next week. This is now next Wednesday, December 31st. That's that next Arctic air outbreak for later next week that continues to move in this fashion along that polar jet. We'll go out a little farther in time, and uh, by the time we get to the first of the new year, this is next Thursday, again, a uh, very wintry look here with strong upper level trough sliding across the Great Lakes towards the northeastern part of the nation, some ridging near Greenland as well at this particular time. So you have the, this uh, flow of air that can certainly bring these bitter cold air masses from northwestern Canada into the north central U.S., into the northeastern U.S. over the next 10 days or so. Now let's take a look at the surface forecast maps using last night's European model run. We had some accumulating snow earlier today across the Philly metro region, New York City metro region, not all that much, maybe a coating to an inch or two, some slick spots right through the morning. Farther to the south, just on the other side of the Pennsylvania-Maryland border, warm enough for plain rain in places like D.C., occasional rain this morning. Now this will kind of push to the north and east over the next few hours with some accumulating snow and, and some of those higher elevation locations of interior mid-Atlantic, interior northeast, you certainly can get a few inches during the next few hours. Now let's move forward in time here and we'll see that kind of push them farther and farther to the north and east by the time we get into the latter part of today and then we'll get into the uh, morning hours on Wednesday. Now this is Christmas Eve and uh, notice here a uh, kind of a strong flow of air out of the northwest. This will be basically a cold frontal passage later on tonight uh, across the mid-Atlantic northeast U.S. setting the stage for a dry but chilly day on Wednesday which is important. There's still a lot of people that travel on Christmas Eve so it looks dry uh, in much of the mid-Atlantic region, northeast U.S., and really dry throughout three-quarters of the nation here as we begin the day on Wednesday. Still getting pounded by Pacific storms from California northward all the way to Washington and Oregon, and a, a stiff northwest flow of air on Wednesday in the northeastern part of the nation. Now, we'll move forward in time here. And we have a big event coming on Friday, Friday night time frame in the northeastern part of the nation. Notice here by Thursday morning, this is Christmas morning here, we have this very strong high pressure area. Canadian born, was born over the northwestern part of Canada, dropping to the south and east. And anybody who's been watching my videos over the years know that a high in this part of Canada is often a crucial player in terms of getting frozen precipitation in the I-95 corridor region. Indeed, this is headed right into this position for the end of the week here. Now let's move forward in time here uh, uh, towards the latter part of the week here. Here we go on Thursday night, Christmas night, and then finally into Friday morning. Notice the position of this high moving right over the southeastern part of Canada. So you have cold air, very cold air, especially at the lower levels of the atmosphere, uh, <coughs> excuse me, what we call kind of a cold air damming situation, sending cold air east of the Appalachians down along the I-95 corridor region. And that is going to set the stage for a pretty ugly event, I think, on Friday, Friday night. By ugly, I mean there could be significant icing in portions of the Mid-Atlantic region. We've talked about this 540 thickness line right here as being kind of a a rain snow line, kind of a useful tool to determine rain snow. And basically what is setting up, I think, for Friday is some very low level Arctic air will remain in place, will be reluctant to give up its ground. So temperatures at the surface level, places like Philadelphia and D.C. may be at or below freezing, but you go aloft and you may have a little bit above freezing temperature. And that's why all these colors are showing up here. There's a possibility of significant sleet, significant freezing rain later Friday, Friday night, and in areas just cold enough, significant snow as well as on the table for uh, portions of the Mid-Atlantic region. We'll just have to see how this plays out. We'll go a little bit farther in time, and here we go again. A significant winter storm. Now notice, 
This storm, unlike some of these prior clippers, which have moved in this fashion, notice this storm is taking more of a southern route. And part of that is as a result of that high latitude blocking that is setting up over Greenland later this week into the weekend. And you have this very strong surface high right here. So this is taking more of a southern route. This locks in the cold air for the mid-Atlantic region, at least at the low levels of the atmosphere, uh, and uh, certainly remains quite cold across the northeastern states. So again, we could be setting up for a significant ice event, and in places cold enough, a significant snow event. Friday, Friday night uh, time frame into the morning hours on Saturday. And here, again, that low kind of taking this track more of a southern track than previous uh, uh, clipper systems, which have gone kind of a more of a northern track into the southeastern part of Canada. Now, let's go out a little bit farther in time towards the latter part of the upcoming weekend. And here we go. By the time we get to Sunday morning, December 28th, we have a very strong Arctic front right here. And this is that Arctic air mass with its origins over northwestern Canada uh, barreling to the south and east by the time we get to uh, the uh, latter part of the upcoming weekend. This is Sunday morning. Go out a little bit farther in time. Can be warm enough for some rain ahead of it out across the mid-Atlantic region, northeastern part of the nation on uh, Sunday evening, Sunday night time frame, and then that uh, Arctic blast r reaches the mid-Atlantic northeast U.S. by the time we get to the early part of next week. Again, uh, Arctic air mass moving in for the early part of next week into the northeastern part of the nation. This is as we begin the day here on Monday. No doubt there will be some uh, lake effect snow, some snow showers as well associated with this incoming Arctic air intrusion early part of next week. This is again next Monday, December 29th. It'll be very cold right in this part of the nation as we begin uh, those last couple of days in December. And remember, uh, later next week could be yet another Arctic air outbreak from northwest Canada all the way into the same part of the nation later next week by the time we get to about the first day of January. So a lot going on, uh, especially across the western states with uh, uh, plenty of low-level rain and high-level snow across California, Washington, Oregon, several feet of snow uh, on tap for the Sierra Nevada of eastern California and a winter-like pattern for the northeastern states with multiple uh, storm systems to deal with and multiple cold air outbreaks over the next five or ten days or so. That's it for now for ArcfieldWeather.com. This has been meteorologist Paul Dorian.